Hey guys, it's your girl Corporate Carolyn and I'm taking a break from work even though it is already after five, but um, I wanted to make a video because um, I've just been frantically putting out a lot of content because my mind is just firing like crazy um, with different topics as it relates to black women. And so I even had to apologize and like pull a video and republish it. Um, it was the one, could you have overlooked your Mr. Right? because um, I had run to turn a timer off and I meant to go back and edit that. And then I also um, like stopped mid-sentence because I was so frazzled from running to turn the timer off. And I said, oh yeah, I'm gonna cut that out. But in my haste to upload it, I forgot to cut both of those things out. <laughs> so I had to re-edit it. But anyway, I was reading through the comments. I apologize if I'm slow with that um, because being so crazy and publishing all these videos, um, the comments are like, all over the place so um, I will get to them as soon as I can if I've um, been remiss with any of your comments because I really appreciate the engagement especially working by myself um, you know the whole day where I don't see anybody but anyway someone left a comment um, and it's surprising that in 2024 that colorism is still a thing and that it has some women feeling less than um, the same way that I felt like back in say maybe 1986, 87 or 88 because people actually thought I was too dark. So I'm talking to some women who are out here in the dating game and I can't say that I haven't heard songs when my children um, who are grown now when they used to listen to rap music and you know I'd hear Lil Wayne and different people talking about you know a red bone or maybe a Chris Brown talking about a yellow um, bone or whatever um, you know talking about really light-skinned women not realizing that as you're creating your art that that could hurt the feelings of some of us that are not you know um, in the standard of beauty that you're choosing to speak about. Just because you talk about those women, it doesn't mean that you don't think the Kelly Rowlands are pretty. Because I know that Kanye West might mention and the Kelly Rowlands to represent, you know, us brown skinned girls. But um, a lot of women, it affects their self esteem as they're trying to be out here in these streets in the dating game. I'm very thankful that I have my husband of 32 plus years and I don't have to fool with all of this, but I definitely dealt with it um, during my search and I also overlooked my husband um, for the years that he was there. I never tried to find him when I saw his picture in our college newspaper because he was so light skinned and I had run into someone his complexion before and that person you know, had actually um, just like looked right through me because I'm a smiler, I'm an eye contact making person and I did all of those things with that guy and um, and he just looked right through me. Turns out, it's funny that he and my husband were friends and they played soccer together and I think that he was probably done with women like me by the time he ran into me because my husband was saying how mean a lot of the brown skinned girls were to them when they first got there. So colorism exists on both sides. I don't want you ladies to think that it's only on our sides. But anyway, this person was saying that, you know, she's trying to be confident, you know, she's looking her best, she's putting herself out there, and she's still not having much success. Well, guess what? I felt the same way. Even though it was 30, you know, 30 something years ago, I did feel the same way. And, um, and I came to the realization just recently that sometimes you are being hidden. I think the lady said that she felt like maybe she was hidden and the people can't see her. And you know, I don't think that's your imagination. A lot of times that's intentional. And the realization that I had is I believe the Lord hid me during the first years when I was at Clemson University before I finally met, um, you know, my Mr. Right, um, my husband right now. Um, and it's funny, those other guys, it was like they couldn't see me. Like, you know, I'd run into different people. Like I got dogged out um, by a guy with a jerry curl back in the 80s <laughs> to show you how bad things were for me. And then when I was at Clemson, you know, I would meet different
different people and these guys wouldn't want to take me to parties um, because back then we went to parties and we danced, which was a really fun thing, um, but none of them wanted to go with you to the party. They wanted to say, oh, well, um, are you going to the party on you know Friday or Saturday? And I said, yeah, I'm going to go. How about you? And it's like, oh, yeah, my friend and I are going and you know maybe I'll see you there. And so I'm like, oh, okay. So you basically want to keep your options open. Maybe you'll dance with me. And if you don't find any, anything better, then maybe you'd like to wind up with me later. I don't think so, buddy. I'm not wasting my time. And so there was another guy um, who was in a fraternity. He invited me to his room. He says, why don't you come over and have pizza? at a certain time and so I went over and you know it's like one hour passes two hour pass two hours pass and then I'm like are we going to order the pizza at some point and he's like well why don't you um you know give me a massage and then we'll order the pizza a little bit later and I'm like I don't think so I've got to run and I left and I found out a few weeks from then that um, that guy had a girlfriend and I had no idea. And so I was very, very frustrated with the foolishness that I was seeing. I was like, these fools don't value me. They don't appreciate me. You know, what the heck? You know, what am I going to do? So it was a very disappointing time. But I didn't realize until a few years later when I wound up meeting my husband. Oh, and then it's funny that a guy that I um, knew before I met my husband, you know, they just looked through me. They didn't really see me. They didn't value me. They didn't think I was cute. You know, they talked to me, but you could tell they weren't interested in me, right? And so then I meet my husband. And then by that point, you know, I had already um, transformed myself, started wearing contacts, not my grandma glasses, like you guys might see um, in the picture where I talk about my 40 year hair care journey and I show what I looked like at 18. I'm going to do another video that talks about, um, you know, the 40 years of grace and God's mercy, where I'm going to show a picture at my high school graduation versus a recent picture now. But anyway, um, during that time period, those guys weren't giving me the time of day. So that summer before I met my husband and wrote my letter, as you'll see in those videos where I talk about, um, you know, how I found my Mr. Right. Um, you know, I started to do to wear contacts. Um, I wore different clothes, showing off my legs, which are my best feature. And then, um, you know, started styling my hair a little differently. And then, so when I met my husband that summer, by the time, well, you know, yeah, the start of the fall semester, by the time the guys started seeing me at parties with him, you know, later on, they were like, we never noticed her. She didn't look like that before. And then a lot of those guys wanted to start talking to me once I actually started dating um, my boyfriend at that time. And so I was like, they couldn't see me before. And I realized that the Lord had put a hedge around me. And it was actually a blessing because it kept me from casting my pearls before swine, doing really dumb head things that I had no business doing. Because um, one of those guys that used to look through me, he turned out being um, one of my husband's closest friends. What if I had slept with him? What if I had lowered my standards and done something really dumb? You know, that would have... Um, cause things to be different with um, with me and my husband when I met him because like other people would have been able to tell him about me. But praise the Lord, I didn't do anything dumb and nobody on Clemson's campus was able to tell him anything about me. They just started to see me once I got with him. And it's funny, as soon as you find your Mr. Right, everybody starts seeing you and people all of a sudden just will come out of the woodwork and want to date you. But I'm like, no, thank you, buddy. I have my one now. So you can keep it. You can keep it moving. You know, just go on now. Go because I have somebody. So all of a sudden I was attractive. All of a sudden people wanted to talk to me and giving him the credit for the transformation and saying, oh, you're really good for her because she didn't look like that before. So all of that to say, um, just be glad that those people can't see you. If they can't see you, that means they're not the right one for you. So that means that you need to continue on your path of self-development, self-discovery, accomplishment, live your life, um, enjoy yourself. And then 
Um, but keep your eyes open though. And when the right time comes and your Mr. Right comes along, then you'll be glad that the Lord kept you from those people. Because a lot of times those people who shouldn't be able to see you, who you might waste your time with, might wind up knocking you up, might wind up um, taking your eye off the prize where you're settling for less. And then when your Mr. Right comes along, you're looking at the Mr. Right now um, or the Mr. Wrong and then you can't see your Mr. Right. But because I was hidden, didn't see those people, when my Mr. Right came along, I saw him and he saw me. And then now you have us 32 plus years, well, 35 plus years later, because um, we were, you know, we dated for a number of years before we got married, after we graduated college. So it was just the best blessing in the world and now, I thank the Lord for hiding me. So right now, what you might want to start doing is thank the Lord for hiding you and, you know, preserving you, um, keeping you from casting your pearls before swine. That's a biblical reference. It talks about putting your um, best before someone who doesn't deserve what you have to offer. So the Lord hid me. He kept me um, from making foolish mistakes. He's probably doing the same for you. So why don't you pray about that and, you know, just make sure that you're doing everything you need to do until your Mr. Right comes along. Be encouraged. Get your hopes back up. Stay positive. Don't get caught up in negativity, pessimism, and hopelessness. It's all a trap. And it also can keep you from seeing your Mr. Right when he comes along. So hear that. And believe it, the right person is out there for you. You just got to do the work on yourself and keep your eyes open and be ready because it's going to happen. Let me know when it does. I look forward to hearing about it. In the meantime, I'll say a prayer for you. But um, until the next time, I hope you guys have a great one. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.